So here you have this profound line of chariots and they've tried to show you how each one of these pieces that you're learning virtue for the sake of developing the mind and you're learning about the mind for the sake of the purification of you and you're learning the purification of you for the sake of removing doubt and he's showing you his causal relationship you see causal 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 right down and the knowledge and vision of what is path and what is not path comes upon you when doubt leaves and you begin to see it everywhere and by knowledge and vision of the way that's why you learned knowledge and vision of what path is and what path is not you will stay on the way you will start to work the way in your life all the time and then you're practicing the way for the sake of knowledge and vision that the holy life is lived under the blessed one for these reasons and so it isn't just one tiny piece it's the unfolding of the causal links and relationships in all these different groups. And this is repeatedly done in the text, showing you how you are able to learn the Dhamma clearly. I have a question and a, and a, and a query. Um, what I liked about the relay of chariots was that you don't carry the past chariot on with you. Um, so there, it's a support that moves you on. But it's also important, for instance, um, uh, in a purification of, um, uh, of view or, or, or whatever, it's, it's embedded in the next stage. It's not something that you then dispense with. It's, it's embedded in the next stage. Um, uh -huh. but, but you don't carry the experience that that created with you. So you were talking earlier about the attachment to the loving kindness or the pity, and and, right. that, dis and that disappears, and the disappearing is an important step, is important recognition, and the relationship to the disappearing is an important recognition. That's right. On the retreat, we were talking about um, uh, you know a another definition of attainments. And seeing this relay of chariots and understanding these causal links is another of the attainments. That's right. That's why, that's why we have a misconception right now on what attainments actually are. Mm. And um, one of the things that D Bhante Dhamma Gavesi and I have discussed a number of times that the real attainment that is occurring in our uh, retreats are the improvement of the different layers of training for the person as they go through each retreat and their their uh, in their improvement in time their improvement in observation their improvement in translation of what they're seeing and and having they're beginning to discover how these are all um, set up in a causal relationship the whole teaching is a causal relationship. It's remarkable. And you know, this thing about um, what you just said about um, as it moves on, the, the one example that Karuna Dasa used in trying to explain this in his book, this is Professor Karuna Dasa from Hong Kong University. I like, I like his books. And um, he said that if you take a staircase, and you go down to the bottom of the staircase, in order for you to get to the second stair, you had to step on the first stair to get to the second stair. And then from getting to the second stair to the third stair, you had to step on the second stair to get to the third stair. Now they're not part of the, of the next stair. If you, if you draw this, this staircase in front of you on a piece of paper, you, you just, and you let this sink in it's kind of remarkable because you have to stand on the first stair to get to the second stair okay uh, but when you're on the second stair the first stair isn't part of it but it was the causal existence of it you see so this is this is how he was trying to get you to understand it's no longer a part of where you are but and yet it was part of what you had to know in order to get there 
and he and the, the Buddha had perfected that inside the uh, causal relationships of setting everything up in the different groups and stuff, and also in in the uh, dependent origination too. Yeah, and also it seems to me that although these are causal links, um, there's aspects of them that do need to be maintained within the practice. Um, so one one example perhaps would be sila. Uh, sila is a, a, a causal link for developing uh, the first jhana, um, uh, and uh, you know you can't then sort of go through to a certain stage and then assume that sila is is of no consequence anymore. <laughs> That's uh, right. It's important. Yeah. Uh, mm. No, that's really important. And that's one of the things that Bhante um, Bhima Lorenzi used to talk a lot about is people say, well, we already know the sila, so we'll just put that aside and then we'll try to go, but then they never get there. Mm -hmm. You see, that's one of the reasons that the kind of progress that we see happening, it doesn't happen all the time because they... They took um, the idea, the, the the description. I forget how it works with the um, with the uh, oh, how does it work with the eight parts of the eightfold path? But you have the seal of parts, and then you have uh, the practical parts that you're going to work with, and and then you have the um, wisdom, the wisdom outcome. Okay, you cannot. Uh, you were not supposed to take that, those three pieces for Sila and dismiss them after you learned what they were. You were supposed to keep them going all the time. And I have used the example of this by taking a, um, you know, you take a piece of paper. I, I, you've probably seen me do this. You take a piece of paper, like take this piece of paper, all right, and you fold it in half, okay? And um, then you fold it in half again. Okay, and then you fold it in half one more time. Now, when I open this up, I'm going to have an eightfold fan. And this is something this old teacher in Sri Lanka, he showed me this. The first, he's the, actually, it wasn't something I thought of. It was actually when he made it perfectly clear. He said, you know, once you do this, you have these pieces. Okay, here, I'm going to open them up and then I'm going to. I'm going to refold them so that they they come out like a fan. You have to do it back again like this. And you have to do it like this. And he was saying that in modern teaching, a lot of times people think that you can just, uh, he said, here's eight. Okay, he starts like this, eight folds, right? So if I open this up like this, I have a fan that can cool me. And he would say, now I have a fan that I can cool myself. I can feel it, right? But if I were to take three of these and eliminate them, okay? So let's take three of them and eliminate it. And now my fan is getting smaller. <laughs> and now I can't, I can't, I can't get almost any coolness out of this. And I'm irritated and upset. <laughs> he says, I'm craving for coolness and I, I don't have any way of doing it. And then if you eliminate more pieces, <laughs> you know, than that, and you end up just having three practice pieces left. You only have three practice pieces left now. You can't, you can't make any air. He was just being funny, but he was trying to get across. The fact that you cannot take these things and eliminate them out, that the eightfold path was eight folds in a path for a reason. You have to be using all eight of them in the correct way for you to make progress the way the Buddha was intending. <laughs> that's what he was trying to show you. And I, I thought that's such a simple example, you know, <laughs> to take a piece of paper and show the kids that in Sunday school. And they began to understand Sila is like a, a, a backbone. It has to be there and has to be functional and developed and continue to be developed or else the progress doesn't happen. Yeah.